powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you today by the Gallery Bar Book and Games Ocean Casino Resort this football season. We're there every Monday. You can cheers on your favorite drinks while cheering on your favorite team. Go to the Gallery in Ocean Casino Resort. Go for the win. For more info, visit theoceanac.com. Must be 21 or older to play. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We've got our who's in, who's out coming up in 40 minutes. We'll tell you who the 14 teams will be in the playoffs. But who are the best teams? Adam Kaplan has his weekly power rankings over at InsideTheBirds.com. And I know, Adam, this has got to be difficult. It's hard to find the top five teams, let alone try to rank who these teams are at this stage of the season. Yeah, Mike, it's actually the most difficult thing is not the top four, actually top five, because they they were pretty much on by last week. Uh, except for the Chiefs are now on a buy. It's everybody else. It's like I have I have the Giants at six, and I agree with those people who say there's no way they're they're that good at six and one. But who do you have in front of them? See, I the way we do the rankings since we started doing them last year was we take where they are now. We also project where they'll be in the future. Well, the Jets just lost two key players for the season, right? I have them at number seven. Ironically, I have the Giants and Jets who play in the same st- stadium. I have them at, at at six and seven. After that, the Ravens are four and three. They're really not that good. The Chargers are four and three. They've got significant injury issues. The Titans are doing it with smoke and mirrors. I don't know how they're doing it on offense. They they have very little talent. If you just go through our list, and as, as you said, you could see them at insidethebirds.com. Every team has a flaw. I mean, that's the problem with the league this year. It's the Eagles one, Bills two, Chiefs three, and you see my you could see my write ups there. Cowboys four, Vikings five. But after that, you can find flaws with every team. Yeah, I mean, you go down to Washington at 24. They've got three wins. They're a game under 500. So you're going all the way. 24 teams in this league are within a game of being 500 right now. So it kind of shows this is the vision that the NFL has. They want the parity. You know, it's funny because the league calls it competitive balance. Right now there are, uh, by my count, over 500, there were 10 going into last week's games, and they are now 13. But you know, Tom Brady said a couple weeks ago, there's a lot of bad football, and there is. Like the the Bears who put up the shocker, the, one of the biggest shockers of the season. Justin Fields up to this past game had been awful. Like really, anyone who's fair about it would say, what's wrong with this guy? Had a nice game last night. He's obviously very talented, but – his issue was holding the ball too long, not making good decisions. A lot of fumbles. He had four fumbles last night. Didn't lose any of them, but he, he had ball security issues through a pick. But in the end, he made plays with his feet, made some good throws. But they're three and four, and they play they played relatively good defense this season. Let's split. That's some... the story of, of these teams. They're just every team seems to have a flaw, except for the for, for top five or six. Right. Well, let's split some hairs here because you mentioned New England how poorly they played last night, three and four. You've got teams like Tampa Bay, who some people thought were a Super Bowl contender. Yep. San Francisco, who has this really good defense, went out and got Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, and oh, by the way, the defending Super Bowl champions all below, behind the New England Patriots, who we saw lay an egg last night. So are you saying you think Tampa, San Fran, Green Bay, and the Rams are kind of out of the playoff mix? Well, right now, Mike, they obviously would not be in the playoffs if the division, if the, if the playoffs started now. But I'm expecting the Bucks. I know everyone's killing Brady. I get it. They were they were ninth last week. We moved them down to 15. Niners were 14. We moved them down two spots. I believe the Niners are going to win that NFC NFC West. The problem with the Rams, we have at 18. They're down three starters on their offensive line. They've got they're they're basically playing with one wide receiver, Cooper Cup. They come up by this week. Matthew Stafford, they're not protecting him. He's not an athletic quarterback, so if he can't be protected, it's, he's going to struggle. And their defense isn't nearly as good without Von Miller and others. So that if you look at them at three and three, I think that's a fair ranking at eighteen. I, I just it, it's so much mediocre football. But you're right, Bucks, Niners, Packers, who are also down there at seventeen, Rams. We all expect them to be top ten teams, and I don't know if they're going to get there. But right now, 
I need to see more out of them to think that they could be a top 10 team. Yeah, another uh, spot on this list that I think is interesting is where you have the Seahawks at number 13. Are we starting to take this Seahawks oh. team? Are we starting to take them serious? What do we do with them? Yeah, if you're seeing me on YouTube, I'm shaking my head. I'm, I, there are a couple teams I'm going to get wrong. The Panthers I'm going to miss on. Or, although they had an unbelievable win last week. you got to be kidding me. And I'm going to be way wrong on the Seahawks. I didn't see this. No, I'm, I'm going to be right on the Jets. I, I actually I, – I don't – you know, I, when I gamble, it's usually the same stuff. Preseason over-unders, I like, it's kind of fun for me to put 50 bucks down on a team, see what happens. And I'm going to get the Jets right. I had over five and a half, but I'm, I'm going to miss the Seahawks. I had under six. There's Obviously, they're going to win. Although DK Metcalf, we don't know when he's going to be back with his, his injury, his knee injury. But, yeah, well, here's the thing. They're really young. They finally, Mike, invested on their offensive linemen, and they're doing great there. And how about Geno Smith, maybe one of the most approved players in the NFL on either side of the football? They're shocking the world. I cannot believe they're four and three. And right now, they're leaving the NFC West. Who saw that coming? Nobody. Uh, another interesting <laughs> one. I, there's somebody that we could point out here and have great conversation on. Adam Kaplan. You can check out his power rankings over at InsideTheBirds.com. And it's a lot of fun to show the parity here. But one team we thought would be possibly a Super Bowl contender. You have them in the. 30 spot, that's Denver. What has happened with this Broncos team? Because a lot of people said they had a roster, but if they got the quarterback, they went and got the quarterback, what's wrong with the roster? Well, the quarterback's the problem, and then they they have not run the ball particularly well. They lost Javante Williams, their second-year running back, who they're expected to have a breakout season, so they're not running it well. The quarterback was not playing well. They lost their left tackle for the season. They're an absolute mess, and and they don't know if Russell Wilson will be be available this week. He missed last week's game. Brett Rippon, Mark Rippon's nephew, <laughs> started against the Jets. They, they they couldn't move the ball very well. They're an absolute mess. They're another team. Everyone who thought they'd be good missed on them. There's, there's no doubt. I, I, I'll admit, I expect them to be much better. It's been, a, it's been in my 20 years of coming to the NFL, I've never seen anything like this. The star teams, the star quarterbacks, doing horribly. And guys like Gina Smith come out of woodwork and doing bad. They've never Gina Smith has never had a good year. It's it's crazy. Well, Adam, it's you know in the NFL, it's almost a rite of passage that if you have a quarterback, I mean, even if you don't win the division, that you're getting in. Right now, yeah. teams that are not in the playoffs, the Green Bay Packers, uh, you know, Kyler Murray, who just signed a huge deal, he's out right now. You take a look on the other side, no Russell Wilson. Uh, I mean, you got. Possibly, by the way, Joe Burrow, they would not be a playoff team. They went to the Super Bowl last year. So uh, there's a bunch of top-level quarterbacks who are not in there right now. Well, Burrow's the last two games has played out of his mind. He had nearly 400 yards in the first half uh, in last week's win against the visiting Falcons. So, yeah, he's back, and the defense has a couple of problems at defensive tackle. They got a couple of guys out. But they're 4-3. and three. We, we moved them up from 15 to 10 to 11. I, I look, I was telling you at the start of this, I don't really want to have Baltimore in the top 10, but you can't make a case for other teams because they're not playing well. Yeah. Now I had a, a couple of people argue with me on Twitter that the, that the Cardinals should be higher only because they added D hop came back and they added Robbie Anderson. I want to see that. And I hear, I hear people saying that I need to see them play consistently well before we put them in our top 15. If the Dolphins, their offense is carrying them. Their defense is hanging in there. They don't have much of a running game. They're in our top 12 because they're, they're just better than the other teams right now. Uh, Adam Kaplan inside the birds football at four. You know, we just talked about quarterbacks not in. What's wrong with the two key teams, Packers, Bucks? Is it the quarterbacks? Is it the roster? Is it a combination? Offensive line for the Bucks. They, they, they are, they're down four guys from last season. They're not protecting Tom Brady well. Lack of explosive plays. And Mike Evans drops that wide open touchdown pass where the DB falls down. I, <laughs> he bobbled it. it. It was embarrassing. He, he never does stuff like that. They don't run it particularly well. Their defense has all sorts of injuries, at least four starters down. It's a problem. And then Green Bay, they're so bad at receiver. They're so young. And the GM, who's really good, by, by the way, he just made a mistake by not adding enough veterans. And they're they're struggling. They cannot – Rodgers holding the ball too long. They're not running it like they used to. Their defense isn't carrying them anywhere. Their defense isn't stopping anybody. They're okay. They're very, extremely talented. But they're not dominating like they should be. Yeah, it's uh, – and I mentioned the Rams coming off their bye. And then you got the Colts at 3-3-1, three, three, and one, who, who are not even under 500, pull their quarterback after seven games. That was bizarre. Yeah, uh, there's so many weird stories. Seven weeks in, we got, of course, uh, Eagles and Pittsburgh this weekend. 
Uh, real quick on that game, let me just get a quick thought. The yeah. Eagles are coming out of a bye, and we'll talk more about this game in depth with Adam on Friday's show. We'll get the injury report and everything. But coming out of a bye, you got this Steelers team. They got waxed by Buffalo a couple of weeks ago. Then they beat Tampa Bay. Um, yeah. Do you feel like this team is a little bit of an overlook? Yeah, we had the bye. We're 6-0. and No one's talking about us because of the Phillies. Or do you think this is the kind of game they come out of the bye and finally get that 38-10 to type of win? I would expect I would expect them to be fine. I I, I give uh, I give Kenny Pickett credit. He's doing the best that he can. Uh, they their line isn't very good. They they have one of the worst running games in the National Football League. That he needs a running game. Uh, them only scoring ten points. Though their defense without T.J. Watts hanging in there, uh, they play a lot of zone defense. They're, they're, it's funny because they did this against Josh Allen. He just threw it over their heads. I mean, it was unbelievable what he's able to do, and he's doing this every week. They they don't they they're kind of one dimensional. They're more of a spread offense. You kind of know what you got. I, the Eagles to me, unlike the Andy Reid coach teams when they were here, they're not having any letdowns. They just what happens is they have a letdown the second half of the games so where they get up big. I don't quite understand that. That that's one of the things we talked about on our shows at Inside the Birds on our on our podcast, which you could see on YouTube as well. We had our self scout there on the bye week, and we talked about them. They have to find a way to do better in the second half when they have the, these leads. I know it's hard. But there's no excuse. You've got to do a better job in the second half. Um, real quick, Eagles notes, Greg Ward is back. Any uh, yeah. read between the lines? Any tea leaves here for you? And this is interesting. Yeah, I, I can't say I was expecting this because I know he had the toe injury and they had an injury settlement with him. So he had to wait a couple months to come back. That's the way the injury settlements work. They're typically six to eight weeks in, on length for settlements. Well, what it does is it on the practice squad where he's going, gives them experience for a punt returner or a slot receiver. Uh I don't think this puts any pressure on Britton Covey because here's why. Greg Ward almost always fair catches. He's He's got really good hands, by the way. He's a good, like, possession receiver. He gets open, but he doesn't run very fast. I'm not going to overread it. I know some people are looking for conspiracy theories because they're coming off the bike. People are looking for something to talk about. I can kind of get a laugh in the social media. Oh, what does this mean? I wouldn't read into it in, in, in anything. It's a player they know, and by the way, if I'm not mistaken, I think he signed in 17 and got a Super Bowl ring on their practice squad. But nevertheless, um, he's back. He's healthy. He's over the toe injury. They'll see what he looks like in practice this week and go from there. Um, obviously, a lot of people talking about the trades. Let me ask you, not yeah. who or what, but what's more likely? Nothing? How about them trading someone and getting assets back in return? You know, could that be a possibility? Or maybe they just get a situational role player. Uh, the latter. They're, they're looking for depth at outside linebacker. We reported this several weeks ago, and we know for a fact they're on that. Uh, it's because of Derek Barnett's injury. They need a, they need depth at, at the outside linebacker stand up. It could because remember, Teron Jackson's not even a part of the rotation. They don't use him anymore. That's another part. It's another guy that, that's not playing. He's inactive every week now. He's not helping them, so they could use some depth. Uh, that that to me, the latter would make more sense. Uh, well, well, in terms of just getting a player that could help them for depth purposes, yeah. And we're going to have those names for you. We're working on it. We we put this out two years ago. We were sort of a year in advance. We had we had reported uh, on Inside the Birds a year before they got Slay that they're having negotiations. We're giving play by play on our shows like every 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 couple of days. Like, okay, here's the latest on Slay. They did this. They did that. They offered this. And the the, the Lions felt that they didn't get a good enough offer. They, in fact, our Lions source told us, no, nope, we're not doing this deal. And then, quite frankly, the the deal that the Eagles wound up getting a year later, I thought was fantastic. I thought. I don't say they got over the lines, but I thought they got the better end of it. And yeah. by the way, he's a phenomenal football player. Yeah, and I just want to, you know, I, I bring this up because the Eagles are in a position where they're six and zero. They're thinking yeah. about a Super Bowl, but could have teams call them and add pick. I mean, if somebody calls for Dillard. Are you going to listen? Well, the, you know, we've talked about that. We Jeff and I, Moshe and I, have gone back and forth. I, you got to be careful. The reason why we were told they didn't trade him last year, uh, in fact, they shut the Panthers down. We're told is because. They're so they're so concerned about guys getting hurt. They they've had this worst gotcha. luck with offensive linemen. I don't, well, did they see enough? Did is. they it's, see enough from like Driscoll to feel okay at moving? Well, that's a great point, Mike, and that's actually the point that I tried to make with, with in our last show because I brought it up. Driscoll's just okay. I don't think he's good enough. But here's the problem with with Dillard: he can't play right tackle. You don't want to play right tackle, right? Exactly. Is Driscoll good enough? I mean, he's not. Driscoll to me is not a left tackle, and I love Jeff Stallen. He's he's a genius. <laughs> Uh, we we put this out on our show. We were told that he doesn't have a good enough anchor to play left tackle. It's just not to play left tackle. It's just not good enough there. So uh, we'll see what happens. But I, I 
they're they they're normally very active. We know they're making calls, receiving calls. This is what all thirty teams talk with each other. We're going to have some names for you on a Friday morning show on Inside the Birds. Okay, check, check that out on all the Inside the Birds platforms. And they're back with the pregame show this Sunday at 10 on the YouTube channel, Inside the Birds. And, of course, right here all week on Football at 4. Most is in tomorrow. Adam's back on Friday. Adam Kaplan, everybody. Thanks, bud. Thank you. And there's Adam Kaplan here on Football at 4 on the Sports Pass Live, 97.3 ESPN. I'm Mike Gill.